so I guess I'll um I'll move into Scott. Um, Scott, um, go you know introduce yourself to the people as well too, man. And um, if you could just like you know give yeah. your story and background into this fight for um for single payer healthcare and everything like that. Yeah, um, Sharif was like really awesome. He honored me with the um, option to be close to vigil at the DC march. Um, we'll be reading off names of um other lost loved ones who to our healthcare system or more accurate wealth care system. Um, I became very active two years ago when I lost my son, Danny. Um, what happened was is he had come home to me one day and he's like, pops, I went to get my medicine refilled and found out my insurance would cancel. I'm like, okay, Danny, no, not a big deal. I'm like, uh, how much is it? He tells me it was 250 bucks, you know? Jesus. It was a big deal because we didn't have it. And um, so I was like, well, Dan, you got an appointment with your therapist in a couple of weeks. I'm sure she can help you out. Um, in the meantime, we'll try to come up with the money and you should get a hold of Fidelis and find out what happened. Now, Fidelis is owned by Centene, which was the major profiteer off of the ACA's managed Medicaid plan. Um, in 2018, they saw their private their uh, profit skyrocket and they increased their revenue by 24% in that first year from adding that uh, plan. I think they made like $60.1 billion in 2018 after adding managed Medicaid. Jeez. And if that ain't sick enough, um, last year during the pandemic, they've almost doubled that at, during the year of the pandemic to $111.8 billion. Now, a lot of that revenue was actually, um, funded because, uh, or found because they didn't have to provide elective care for the first year, which is still health care, but it definitely highlights how much insurance companies profit by denying, not supplying health care. And that's what's being sold to us through the ACA. It did nothing to change the cost of our health care. Anyway, I get away from what happened. Um, so I, Danny's medication that he was on was risperidone which is an atypical antipsychotic has a known suicidal risk of withdrawals. So um, he calls up Fidelis and he finds out that he missed a $20 payment to his managed Medicaid program. Didn't even know he had it because, you know, he was fighting with his girlfriend and then there's like legal problems between him. So he couldn't communicate with her and shit. So um, two weeks later, I see his post on Facebook on April 9th. Um, he says that he decided that he can't get above the pain and that this is selfish, that he super glued his seatbelt shut and decided death by drowning. And he said goodbye to his two children who drove his truck in the Mohawk River. <sighs> Sorry. I saw his post like 32 seconds after he did this, you know? And my wife and granddaughter were at the table and I screamed out, I got to go save Danny, you know? And told him what was going on. And I jumped in my car and raced down to the lake because I just saw a picture of, that he shared on Facebook of the cab of his truck overlooking the water, you know. And I figured maybe if I could get down there, I could save him, you know. And I, I couldn't, you know. Even, even if I got there, the water was like 38 degrees. I have a heart condition, you know. If I jumped in the water, it would have been too casual, you know. But, I mean, I, I swore to Danny in, in front of his, at his funeral, in front of all of his loved ones. And I'm going to make our lawmakers look me in the eye and see the consequences of their decisions. Because this shit ain't fucking right. You know, because my son didn't know he had a $20 payment. I forgot to mention, he made his $20 payment that day on the phone when he called them. They said it was April 9th. And they told him his plan would be reinstated on May 1st, the next billing cycle. Next fucking billing cycle. A known suicidal risk. You know, they know what they're doing. Oh, by the way, Fidelis is also the CEO was sold it to Centene. His father, Frawley, of the Catholic Diocese, the Albany Catholic Diocese, that preaches the one unforgivable sin. That motherfucker is condemning patients every single day to purgatory, according to his teachings, because they're not paying him $20. That's why I'm going to be the one hosting the vigil. Because I understand the pain, you know, losing a loved one, you know. I might also add, I was mentioning earlier about how I'm an activist for the New York Health Act. This year, during the budget for the New York Health, or for uh, the New York budget, 
Governor Cuomo has gone on record saying he's rescinding that $20 essential plan premium, that it's inhumane. Governor Cuomo never reached out to me. Now, our vice president has heard Danny's story. Um, Senator, uh, what's her name? <laughs> I've got my own senator's name. Uh, what, what's the female senator from New York? Uh, what's her name? Drawing a blank on her. Let me. Yeah, I, I forget her name. Uh, I know it's Chuck I'm Schumer. Not. not Chuck Schumer. The, um, the other she actually helped with the Bernie's bill too. Is it Hastings? No, not Hastings. No, 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 no. It was uh, no, it was, um, state senator or federal senator. Representative. No. Anyway, it, my point is, is our vice president, Senator um, Representative Tonko, has heard Danny's story. Kirsten Gillibrand. Kirsten Gillibrand, yes. Gillibrand. Kirsten Gillibrand has met with me. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> uh, and she's heard Danny's story. Okay. Our vice president has heard Danny's story. Rokana. On and on the list goes. So many politicians. And if you think Cuomo hasn't heard Danny's story when he sat down with the health committee, who both Gustavo Rivera and um, Dick Godfrey, both in the health committee, are floored by Danny's story, and they're discussing the $20 payment on that essential plan. If you don't think that story was brought up, you'd be wrong. Now, do you know why Cuomo didn't reach out to me? Because I would have told Governor Cuomo, thank you for saying insurance companies cannot kill our children anymore for $20. But fuck you for making sure they're staying in business so they could kill somebody else's child for another dollar amount. He had the option of getting the New York health plan passed and removing the for-profit insurance industry from New York, and he chose to protect it. Yeah.